Now, Lands is a cool deck that focuses on mana denial, but what if we made it mana denial er er Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video, and today we're going to be playing Green-White Lands. But maybe the deck is not going to look like what you think it is going to look like. Stating the obvious, various lands decks in Legacy are built around the Life from the Loam engine, allowing you to kind of reuse utility lands and have a strong strong sense of inevitability versus most decks in the format. And when I say green-white lands, you're probably thinking, hey, we're going to splash for some white removal, you know, some source of plowshares, prismatic ending, something like that. No, um, we're going to be splashing for Thalia today, and we are essentially going to try to shove together some elements of legacy death and taxes together with elements of legacy lands to create a mana denial monstrosity. Is it a good idea? Eh? Is it a fun idea? Oh yeah. Did I mention we're a Yorian deck? Because we're a Yorian deck too. So Ethan's uh, uh, like initial draft came to me with like a recruiter of the guard package and a whole bunch of white creatures. The general idea was to play Thalia alongside Sphere of Resistance, since like you have so many more lands than your opponent and you don't need to cast that many spells after you've dumped an exploration into play that like you just fully outtax your opponent. And rather than lean into the recruiter of the guard package that Ethan initially suggested, I really wanted to shove Samwise into this deck list. When Samwise ETBs, choose up to one tar target permanent card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Return it to your hand, and then the ring tempts you. So the original list had Rashad and Ports, which I have now switched to Ghost Quarters. And my general idea here is to use Samwise to recur Wastelands, Ghost Quarters, and Fetchlands to kind of lean more in to this mana denial strategy with our white splash. So I think this is going to end up being stronger than like I think it was three recruiters, a flicker wisp, a Lauren, and maybe one solitude or something like that. I don't think that utility is going to be better than the consistency of like staying on point with the core idea, which is mana denial. Um, our mana base gets a little wonky. Lands is essentially a mono green deck that sometimes splashes another color. And despite being pretty close to a monocolored deck, it just absolutely has an absurd number of colorless lands. There was originally one Yavimaya in the mana base. I've upgraded to a second one, and we are going to have a Lush Portico as a surveil land in this deck list. To make room for some extra white sources here, some of the utility lands that might normally be in the main deck have been demoted to sideboard play, and the sideboard kind of has redundant copies of a handful of effects. You know, the Deafening Silences will help us get to our Sphere of Resistances and Thalia's versus Combo. And then we just kind of need some copies of some core things. You know, your Graveyard Hate, your Blue Hate, and your Artifact Hate. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see whether I trip all over myself today or whether or not this is genius deck building. If you like what you see today and you need some magic cards or you need something from Outlaws of Thunder Junction, please consider checking out toamagic.com, that's Tales of Adventures, and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. They've got fast, free shipping, and they have just about anything you could possibly need, including power, just saying. With that being said, let's battle. All right, what are we looking at here? Mox Diamond... Discard, Ghost Quarter, I'm on the play. Mox Diamond, Discard, Ghost Quarter, play Flagstones, Float White Mana, Mox Diamond for green, Junk Flagstones, turn Flagstones into Urza's Saga? Yeah. I'm going to X out this Yorian. All right, discard you. 
play you. Mana from you. Mana from you. Crop rotation. Sacrifice flagstones. Use flagstones ability to lush portico. I don't want soul guide lantern. That can go into graveyard. Now we'll crop rotation for Urza's Saga. Urza's Saga mana. Play Samwise. Samwise gets our flagstone back. Sweet. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with that turn one. General deck idea is a success. And the next turn we have like... Oh, don't blood moon me right now. <laughs> don't do it. Zooby dooby, don't you do it. Fuck. <laughs> All right, well. Sweet. Pretty happy with that draw. Um, I'm not going to play that yet. Because I don't need to. We'll go, yeah. You have three, four. Two in graveyard. I took one out. Daggers. We're going to shut off broadside. Actually, I wonder if I messed up. I wonder if I am supposed to show forest this turn, but that if I draw another mox diamond, I can discard flagstones and grow elvish reclaimer and then attack with it immediately rather than having to activate it. I could buy that. Uh, Chalice is fine. That's not going to be super relevant here. Well, I say as I draw crop rotation, I guess. I'm going to do this. I'm going to rotate away a flagstones or a lush portico into a basic planes with the intention of doing Yorian crimes in the not too distant future. So my opponent is sitting here with mana in their mana pool, so I think they have multiple three drops. We're just trying to figure out which one is it actually best to play. Lock on the token is pretty free here. And end of turn, we'll sack our flagstones. Notice that because of the blood moon, we don't get the fun ability. Get our other basic, and like we are now pretty clearly in the beatdown roll. Oh, nice. That means that I can probably offer Samwise for Rabble Master. Like, very reasonably. Alright, opponent has just taken all of it. And we'll drop a giant knight. We, we've just got the, the bigger creatures at the end of the day. I'm not even sure that something like a Fury is going to get my opponent out of this spot. Alright, so they're going to combat. So, I maybe just don't block. Like, how can, how can I lose from here? I block Rabble Master... And a f hard cast fury off like land plus spirit guide kills Samwise and Knight. I am behind. I think, yeah, I think I'm just not going to block. Like my life total is a resource. Okay, yeah. So we played around something. Presumably fury. All right, I want Force of Vigors and Haywire Mites and maybe Tabernacle. I don't need Soul Guide Lantern. That doesn't really do anything. Sphere of Resistances, especially on the draw, are pretty mid. That already gives me five cards. I straight up might board in Bojukabog just as another thing that I can discard to Mox Diamond. If I feel like something else should come out. I don't have any super funky game one utility lands that are just dead. Is Bojukabog better than Thalia? Thalia helps wall. Goblin Rival Masters and Legion War Boss. if my opponent is playing that. Let's try this. I haven't had enough opening hands with this deck to decide whether or not this deck actually has enough lands in it. Um, but looking good thus far. This hand is absolutely insane if my opponent does not Chalice on one. Blood Moon's a bit of a problem right now. I have Source of Plashers for Magus of the Moon, so it's just specifically Blood Moon. Um, we'll see if this is a non-game. Or if I get to do broken stuff. All right, yeah, dead gone. Trinosphere. Sure. I can consider ghost quartering my opponent's City of Traders to demote it to a regular land. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to play Windswept Heath so I can't be taken off my colors with Blood Moon. Though I'm not sure if I would fetch for white or green. 
I guess I don't have to decide immediately. This is just two damage, and I don't imagine that my opponent is throwing either one of their permanents right now. Well, that's real good. I think that means fetch, get forest, take two, exploration, make new land drop. This represents planes. And then next turn, I'll remove broadside or whatever the largest threat is and go from there and start trying to win the game after that. Oh, this is great. You know, no, no token producer pre-combat or anything. Uh, 13. Blood Moon's fine. Like, it shuts off this Urza saga, but my opponent's not going anywhere super quickly once I remove this. Like, I think their hand is actively quite bad. Thalia is almost good. I think I just remove the broadside first before playing her, though. Let's just pass. Yep. Get out. Ah, yes. The classic Simeon Spirit Guide Desperation. Let's hard cast this and hope it works line. So we will just wall that with a Thalia and be perfectly happy about that. Do I want to play an additional land? Sure. I'll play an additional land this time. I don't have a crop rotation up. Not that my crop rotation does a lot right now. If I draw a Force of Vigor, you know, I can Dark Depths have zero counters on it, and then do the whole Force of Vigor thing. It will take me two hits to kill my opponent, though. Ah, give me in Spirit Guide's cousin. Fantastic. Oh, sorry, I guess I do have crop rotation up, right? Because all the attacks applies before Turnosphere. So let's Yori into hand, and we're chilling. I believe I went down one of each basic. I'm just going to confirm that real quick. One planes, one forest. I did. So I don't have... Ooh, that's annoying. That's very scary. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I don't have just go and fetch planes, cast Yorian as a line here. I don't think my opponent is supposed to shoot Thalia. I think you just let Thalia block and convert the blocked Simeon Spirit Guide into 5 points of damage. So that I take 9 this turn and am at 3. And then, yeah. And then just broadside attack through a Trinosphere kills me next turn. Rough. Because now my Yorian as a blocker doesn't do a ton get adepts with no counters i don't think it's ever relevant yeah so this attack throws at my face we're donezo what if i play endurance just as like another dude that blocks and can attack like i maybe don't need crucible in this matchup so that can become an endurance mox diamond is really really important for me huh mox diamond is my white white and my green green Maybe this being green green is just hard enough on the mana that I like sub out the crucible, which is kind of mid, but don't bring in more. All right, so does this hand actually do anything? So I go Mox Diamond, probably, ooh, no, we do this thing. Mox Diamond, discard Lush Portico, play Exploration, play Wasteland and Caracas. On my next turn, I wasteland my opponent's first land unless it's a Blood Moon. And then Sam wise it back. I have two more wastelands available. This is fine. Does this win? Very unsure. We're in like weird territory. I think I'm willing to try it. Like Sam wise, Caracas, repeated, the ring tempts you, wasteland loop is like appealing. Unsure whether it's actually good. My opponent's on five. Diamond, discard Portico, exploration, and just before someone asks, Samwise only gets things that were put there from the battlefield. So my lush Portico that I just discarded does not count. And we get to take advantage of the fact that this deck doesn't actually play very many basics. Uh, so I'm just going to think for a second. So... I'm going to make Wasteland as a land drop. I'm going to make Wasteland as a second land drop. I think I just want to end with Samwise in my hand. I don't think I play it here. 
So I will wasteland my opponent, make my first land drop, play Samwise, Samwise target wasteland, ring tempts me, do this. I think I just bounce Samwise right now and don't expose him to dead gone. Ye old basic land is fine. More Samwise. Yeah, we can start doing some weird stuff and like work towards scaling this up. Play your ancient tomb, friend. Play your ancient tomb. I'm happy enough to shoot that down. Um, I will float a white, friend. You may destroy my artifact. And now I will Samwise. I will return my Mox Diamond. Now, I think I'm okay with just doing this. I'm going to go ahead and cast a second Samwise. Keep this Samwise. I think I will Samwise my Samwise. I just have so many lands that I can draw. So now I get to loot. Don't... Um, well, Exploration is good for Force of Vigor. It's like, do I hedge more against Blood Moon or do I hedge against Magus the Moon? I think I just dump the Exploration here. All right. My opponent's at 18. And my whole Samwise thing is about to become a lot more threatening. Uh, we're very happy to Samwise that away. Um, yeah, that's probably okay. I'll take two here. And I think this is just fine to do. I don't think I need to try to get infinite Samwise value. We're just going to get back the Wasteland. The Wasteland can represent mana, uh, like colored mana with Mox Diamond in a way that's pretty good. Oh. That's fantastic. Let's see what my looting does. Yeah, I don't even care about Mox Diamond anymore, right? Or no, this can't represent basic planes. Well, I guess I do. I'll discard that. This is five points of damage. Um, I guess the fetch land was good with Samwise Bounce. This also represents another white to just play in and immediately recast Samwise. Yeah, I think I messed up. I think I gave up an extra card that I didn't have to give up. So let's go yaw and yaw. Sort of interestingly, if my opponent like holds back broadside to block, I can just bounce Samwise before combat damage is dealt. Um, this damage is perfectly fine and acceptable. I don't force a bigger this immediately because my opponent might not even be imprinting. They might be trying to throw this at Samwise. So you need something else now because I just bounce. There has to be like a dead gone here. A dismember. That is relatively uncommon. Uh, this is all fine though. Like I'll just put Yori into my hand and start working towards that. So land drop... I guess let's leave open the utility ones. Yori into hand. I'll play Yori in next turn. My opponent now needs soul land into like token producer this turn, I think. And they don't have that. I'm supposed to leave up ghost quarter instead of Caracas that way. I can ghost quarter one of my lands to get my basic planes. Uh, sure. So they're just going to convert that to seven damage. That's perfectly reasonable. Uh, there's the throw. Cast Life from the Loam for two mana. Let's say these two mana. And then I return, like, Wasteland, Wasteland, Lush Portico. Play Wasteland, Wasteland, one, two, three, four, five. That works out fine. Very macabre. Right, bam. Bam. I don't really have anything that's reasonable to blink here. And uh, now we just kind of see who top decks better. It's probably me. Like, I have mana and my opponent doesn't, so, you know. I'm unsure if I'm supposed to dredge with Life from the Loam. Because I kind of just want to draw a creature. Or a Swords of Plowshares. Swords of Plowshares is really huge. Like, that's probably big enough that I just don't dredge. Maze of Ith is a really good hit. Okay. 
I mean, I took 14 direct damage to the face because my opponent's four unknown cards were Red Card Fury, Red Card Fury, one of which was top decked. I will concede. Oh, that's very unfortunate. So if I draw, I get Dark Depths. If I dredge, I can't see what I get. Today's video is sponsored by TopDeck.gg. They're an awesome company that runs an awesome tournament series. If you would like to play for prizes such as Time Twister, check out the Top Deck Championship Series. It's run using their patented Command Tower software, which is awesome for EDH events, although you can use it for anything. Your players can scan QR codes and then get real-time standings and seamless pairings for their event. If you're looking to step up your local tournament game, check them out. All right, my opponent is on six cards. I have a reasonable start here. Um, we're going to be playing, I think, just an Urza Saga game in the early game here with the kind of long-term plan of recur Urza Saga with Samwise, probably. I might just let it go. We'll kind of see where we're at. Like, with Crucible here, I don't have to be in a rush to recur Urza Saga with Samwise specifically. I'll have access to Ghost Quarter Crucible, Crucible Wasteland, if I crack map. All right, so here we go. On it is probably on like the Agatha Soul Cauldron Painter deck. Sure. Thespian Stage. Do I have a Pithing Needle? Whether or not I have a game one Pithing Needle is huge here. I do. This is like annoying against my Crucible plan. I think I'm just going to try to make large Urza Saga construct tokens and kill my opponent. Just like this main deck turn one graveyard hate is kind of rough here. All right. Sort of awkwardly, I also can't really crack my expedition map. If I do so, my construct tokens can start being welded in and out of play which is just not great for me. Do I need to Ghost Quarter this Urza Saga? What if I just make a 2020? Two mana, crack Expedition map, find Dark Depths. No, I can't get both in to play this turn. Okay. I think I'm going to hope that I out Urza Saga my opponent. So we're going to shut off my opponent's Graveyard Hate, which also helps with the combo aspect of their deck. And then I can, like, Crucible Ghost Quarter, Crucible Urza Saga, and go from there and just try to hit my opponent in the face very, very, very hard. 13. Next turn I'm attacking for 12, which means if Ancient Tomb is tapped, it's theoretical lethal, but, like, there's multiple blockers that could get involved. The so 1, 2, 3, 4... I think I'm going to go ahead and get a lush portico end of turn and take a little selection. What do we got, deck? Another Urza Saga? Um, sure. That's perfectly fine. I really don't want to put this expedition map in the graveyard because of Welder. Wasteland's really good right now because of some Samwise nonsense. Let's turn these into 6-6s six and bash on in. I assume my opponent's line is block and then weld a construct into a lotus petal. Uh, yeah, that was expected. That's half of my opponent's life total, and I'm just going to go ahead and take out the Urza Saga that is potentially about to tutor for, you know, a pithing needle or whatever. This does give my opponent access to red mana. I don't think that matters a ton. Could be wrong, though. Oh, that's very good. I'll Ghost Quarter with the intention of Ghost Quartering Urza Saga. Uh, one, two, three, four. This is still five. I think I pre-combat. Just take out the Goblin Welder. This is six life. Both of these are six damage. This is theoretical lethal. I also can make an Urza Saga token if I feel like that is necessary for some reason because one of these things is about to die. Ah, so Kenzen, that gives my opponent another turn. Sure. That's fine. I think now... I wish I had done this differently, given how things progressed. But I think I'm overall okay with this. We'll get that Ghost Quarter back in case my opponent randomly has some other 
piece of graveyard. Uh, yeah, Samwise, you can you can still be my ring bearer. I guess we can die to top decked painter. Go to two, one, two, three to activate. So given how things progressed, I wasn't expecting so Kenzen, but like I could have played around this better by not making my land drop from graveyard holding up Samwise. If I don't need Samwise or Ghost Order, I and Welder dies, I wait get Wasteland. Junk this. I guess that lets Saga happen. One, two, three. A land gets there too. I don't know. Um, Haywire Might seems reasonable. Bojuka Bog seems good. Force of Vigor seems good. Endurance and Tabernacle are probably playable. I don't think I've drawn a Sphere of Resistance this entire league. I guess it's only match two. So, like, conceptually, what's my role? I'm trying not to die. I guess I want to be the beatdown. I want to just get my opponent dead. But I might kind of awkwardly be in the control role. It's also unclear to me whether or not my constructs are on average going to be larger than my opponent's constructs. I kind of feel like this stuff is worse than this stuff. Like I'm not trying to tax, I'm trying to answer artifacts and answer graveyards. And spheres and thalias get in the way of me casting my relevant spells. I'm not 100% sure about this. And I think if I'm boarding up four more creatures, I don't play Tabernacle, but also not sure about that either. I need another land for this to be reasonable. So this is Force of Vigor, Pitching Knight, turn one Reclaimer with one land in Graveyard, an answer for an early Welder. If I draw any land on turn one, I can play Urza Saga and dedicate mana to it and be very happy with that. I'm going to try keeping this. But it's a little sketch. Sure. Endurance. I think I am going to take my highest upside play here, which is still playing the Urza Saga. And if I miss, I will just rotate this away. And we can work towards, like, maybe flagstones for some card advantage. That's a very good Force of Vigor target. Fuck. I, like, so don't care about this if it's not destroying my Urza Saga. Alright. Eh. Eh. I think I don't give my opponent the extra mana for their turn. I think I'm willing to miss a point of damage to do that. Um, that was just very awkward. Ugh, that's annoying. Okay. I'm trying to get more value out of these Force of Vigors. Rather than just destroying my opponent's Great Furnace as a two-for-one for one for me right now. Uh, yeah, this is what I want. I think I Swords to Plowshares while this is still on the stack, though. So I don't get got by something really weird like Spirit Guide into uh, a Pyroblast effect. Get rid of Painter, get rid of Great Furnace, get rid of Knight. Uh, Crucible is almost a good card. Play, play another artifact for me to hit with this Force of Vigor, please. Uh, sure. My opponent has used Sokenzen for creatures twice. I think that is more than I have ever used it for creatures in my history of playing recorded magic. I am just going to two for one myself to take out this Urza Saga. Like, I know that card is incredibly potent. I'm just looking for any third land drop. I think I say no to that. Like, it is a perfectly fine card since it walls these, but, like, I just want to make third untapped land drop and then start playing Urza Saga from my graveyard. Like, that's my conceptual plan to win this game. And I don't think I am in any danger of dying to these two tokens as is. Sure. Damn it. I drew all three of my Force of Vigors in my 80-card Yorian pile. Now we're taking a Delver worth of damage every turn. And it's another Welder. Tabernacle that is in my board is sounding pretty good right about now. Although, honestly, it's not, right? They just pay. Ugh. I can't, I can't even crack this. If I crack this, I lose Mox Diamond. Oh, that's frustrating. Take out my opponent's Painter. Maybe I lose if I don't make another land drop anyway. I think I'm going to just hope that my opponent doesn't see it, because I think I am at a very low percentage chance to actually win this game at this point. I'm just going to hope that my opponent misses Welder on my shit. They did not miss it. I will concede to that. So do I want Tabernacle? 
I don't think I do. It was kind of a weird set of circumstances that would have led to Tabernacle being okay there. Uh, this hand doesn't really do much. I guess Mox Diamond, Discard Wasteland, play Thespian Stage. I can crop rotation for a Dark Depths. I guess I have both sides of the 2020 while having Forza Vigor. I'm just like not excited about this though. Maybe it's fine. We'll do this. Discard. Play a Wasteland. Play a Wasteland. Hold up. Crop rotation. I can also just like crop rotation into an Urza Saga if my opponent doesn't have an aggressive start. Sure. Do I just want to work towards Pithing, pithing Needle immediately? That's probably reasonable to do. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. Maze of Ith is not particularly strong here. We're hoping to dodge like Ancient Tomb into Moon Effect. I just want my opponents to play artifacts. Um, I'm going to let that make mana. Yep. This is why I let it make mana. Take out Urza Saga and Painter. Exiling the Force of Vigor. Make my token. Uh, Wasteland is a solid pickup. Make my token. I think I'll just Pithing Needle Goblin Welder here. I think I'm going to awkwardly show Wasteland. Send in for four. I just, like, if I talk top deck one of the two copies of Dark Depths next turn, I want to be able to play it and make my 2020, and I can't do that if I play Maze of Ith. Magus of the Moon. Sure, I, I will just blow up Ancient Tomb in response. My opponent's at 14. I have eight damage showing. Ma uh, Maze gets turned into a mana producing land, which is actively good. Um, I messed up here. I don't think my opponent's jump blocking with Magus, but if they do, I have objectively made a mistake because Maze does not produce mana if Magus jump blocks. Not that Yorian is like super, super castable right now or anything anyway, but you know, good habits. Sure. Send in for eight. I assume at least one of these gets blocked. Opponent blocks with both welders. Sure. I will play a land and pass. My opponent needs to, I think, play a painter this turn. And then have a land. There's half of it. So now they need painter plus ancient tomb. Um, once this Magus... I might lose this game for playing Maze of Ith instead of Caracas earlier. Because I can't flicker my Pithing Needle to Grindstone, because Maze of Ith is not going to produce second main phase red mana. Or, uh, yeah. Sure. I am debating whether or not I want to Horizon Canopy and draw a card and try to draw Swords to Plowshares. Or if I just want to be able to Yorian flicker Pithing Needle next turn. I guess I can draw Swords to Plowshares later. Uh, sure. I, I made some mistakes there. So, like, if I had played the Caracas previous turn, I play Flagstones this turn, and then I play this Flicker Pithing Needle, Pithing Needle is on Grindstone, and then I'm, like, super, super, super safe. I, I think, given that Magus of the Moon was likely to be in a chump lock situation over the next couple of turns, I think I just played that wrong. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. Okay, I don't like this opening hand here. I have no sort of acceleration. I don't have the ability to like start making Urza Saga tokens immediately. And I don't think playing Thalia into Samwise is a legacy power level thing right now. Uh, Death and Taxes is kind of struggling as a deck conceptually in the format right now. This one at least has a bunch of tutors. Samwise Expedition map is slow. How good is just like... Turn to Samwise, get back a fetch land. I don't think it's great. I think I'm just going to keep too many lands. More Painter? More Painter, we're doing this again. Okay. That's reasonable. How much do I care about basics? I usually don't get mooned in game one. 
from this deck because they're an Urza Saga deck that's usually in the sideboard, but, you know, usually. I think since I can just Expedition Map for a basic, I'm just going to place Savannah here and pass the turn. I think I don't remove Welder immediately. I'm going to remove it in this turn cycle in all likelihood, but I don't do it 100% of the time. Or I think with that on the stack, I will just eat this. I'm definitely feeling the power level differential between Ghost Quarter and Wasteland here. Like, I probably need to stop this card. Or can I give my opponent a construct? It's a pretty large construct. I don't, I don't think I give my opponent a construct. This is uh, not going to be the world's best reclaimer, and maybe I should even just play Expedition Map over it. But I would like this to become a 3-4. So I guess the hope here is that my opponent cracks Soul Guide Lantern to draw a card, and then, like, my graveyard synergies are back online rather than off. I'm always bringing stuff to hand kind of works against Elvish Reclaimer. All right, black indicates Chaos Defiler, which is a spooky card. Blasts are online. I think Blast on my Savannah is batshit insane levels of good. With a pause this long, I think it's pretty clear that my opponent has a Blast and they're trying to figure out whether to use it or what to do with it. If they don't use it now, I will maybe get to do some cool Samwise stuff. Fuck, they figured it out. <laughs> yep. Oh, is there another? Man, I can't beat another one. I'm going to hope that my read was wrong and that they do not have another. If they blow up this land in response to this trigger so I don't get to make mana with it, it's pretty damn rough. Um, this situation is very bad, though, because top deck grindstone activate is online. Uh, okay, that's too much mana. Oh, I don't beat that. I don't beat that ever here. That's just a tutor that also shuts off Expedition Map that can also represent liquid Metal Coating. Yeah, yeah we're, we're fine scooping it up there. All right. Uh, we'll board similarly to last time where I think we junked Thalia's and Spheres. I guess if my opponent has Karn the Great Creator, I should consider Thalia just as a 2-1 attacker a little bit more. But like, te for tempo reasons, free Force of Vigor and one mana Sword Splashers matter so much in this matchup that I think this is just what I'm doing. I am one land away from this hand being awesome. We haven't done a lot of like Life from the Loam Dredge nonsense this league. You know, something, 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 80 card deck differences, something, something, something. I am into this hand. I think I'm just getting rid of Soul Guide Lantern and just keeping four lands, playing two on turn one, getting access to both my basics, and playing two on turn two, and then having like Knight and Urza Saga going. I, I think I am very into this idea. So, exploration... I guess I don't need to fetch immediately. I can leave the flexibility of getting Lush Portico, but I think I always want my two basics. Like, unless my opponent just opens up on some crazy multiple Lotus Petal nonsense that I feel like I just need to answer now. Opal's on. Uh, sure. Uh, I am just going to take the basic out of my deck so I don't draw it. Uh, sure. So we can do this. Play Knight with this and fetch Lush Portico. Bonfire of the Damned. Oh, don't love that. How spicy. How spicy is your deck? Don't have to be that spicy. Cast Defiler is just good. I'm going to lose my Knight here. Since this is a choose, I guess I like technically should Lush Portico now. I don't think they ever choose the fetch land, but you know. Wasteland. I think I need something to break this up, so I think that just goes to Graveyard. I've shuffled, so my um, Graveyard Hate that I initially bottomed with my Mulligan Choice is back in the deck randomly. Exploration is not going to do it. I think I am not literally, but effectively dead. 
As long as my opponent blows up my Urza Saga with their Chaos Defiler and I don't get to Pithing Needle the Goblin Welder, I think it's very hard for me to win this game from here. Like, this is 5 damage every turn cycle. This says Trample, so it's not getting Chump blocked. Uh, fuck it, I'm giving my opponent priority here. Holy shit. Wow. I don't think I am supposed to be allowed to Pithing Needle. I will shut off Goblin Welder. I messed up. Supposed to float, man. I'm not supposed to make the artifact. I'm just supposed to take out this and this, probably. After this resolves. Ah, fuck. I'm gonna take, like, five more damage than I need to. Oh, they had a spirit guide. Or no, this is one mana. Oh, this just doesn't matter. I'm an idiot. Right. So this can't bring it back, but this can still sacrifice, so they get the dies trigger. Dies trigger kills Pithing Needle, and I just lose anyway. All right. I probably could have played that tighter there in some capacity, but I don't think that I was beating what was going on. All right, um, this is a pretty traditional lands style hand. Um, you know, as long as we get to start doing the Life from the Loam thing, we're good. Force of Negation on Life from the Loam is one of the scarier things that can happen in the short term. All right, cool, it worked. So the next hope is that Wasteland is good against my opponent's deck. If it's not, Life from the Loam can find me an Urza Saga or some combo pieces or whatever. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. I'm just going to play out Wasteland. I, I think I'm not going to hold up Swords to Plowshares. I think holding up Wasteland is more important. All right. Stuff is resolving. I assume this will be a basic. Yep. I have no problem with Ghost Quartering Infinite Basics. Like, my opponent might have, like, two basics in their deck or something. We don't know exactly what they're playing yet. I am not going to dredge life from the loam this turn. I'm going to just go to my opponent's turn. Uh, this is fine. I'll go to their upkeep. And then we'll start attacking the mana. Ooh. Sure, so you can make your choice now. Archon of Cruelty. I will Wasteland this. Ghost Quartering this gives my opponent guaranteed black if they have a black basic in their deck, so I don't think I will Ghost Quarter that immediately. Okay, they had it anyway. This is going to be some sort of animate dead, uh, which is, like, fine. Uh, yeah, I'll just, like, discard a Thespian stage. A uh, Grief. I can both Sage you, Animate Dead, or I can give my opponent 5 life. I think I'm going to give my opponent 5 life. This baits out like a Force of Will. And just like gets rid of this creature forever. Cool. You get nothing. Nothing. I think the next thing I want to do is start attacking lands. There's very little reason for me to Ghost Quarter immediately. I can take a draw step. Not dredging. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm fine with Ghost Quarter now. Probably turns this into a swamp. Cool. We may have a Wasteland. No Animate Dead on a Grief or Equivalent. Now nah, we loam. I think I'm going to start with Ghost Quarter on Swamp. Yeah. All right. Good old Lands Prison style goodness. I like Endurance a whole lot here. I like Bojukabog a whole lot. Choke is probably okay. I don't know that it's better than okay. Tabernacle is a thing that I am legally allowed to do. I haven't shown my opponent a bunch of X1 creatures yet, so like, how will they evaluate Bowmasters? I guess conceptually, what's my role? I probably win with a Shadow Speared, Urza Saga token, or by destroying all of my opponent's lands. Samwise feels slow here. I am not the biggest fan of crop rotation versus blue decks, but I think crop rotation for Bojuka Bog kind of slaps. On the draw, do I want Sphere of Resistance still? Maybe don't. Do I need Pithing Needle? Like, my opponent has Wastelands. Like, I guess it matters. On the draw, maybe we don't prison that hard and we just do this. Is Choke better on average than Sphere of Resistance? Unsure. 
Like my opponent does have like basic swamp. I guess I like destroy that with ghost quarters. Uh, this hand is perfectly reasonable. It's a little weird, but like I have good cards. I hope to draw another green card so that I don't. Uh, that's not what I want. Um, anyway, I hope to draw another green card so that if I end up in an emergency situation, I don't have to pitch life from the loam to endurance. I would probably endurance away like an Archon of Cruelty style threat. I might let a troll resolve and just try to deal with it with Maze of Ith. I don't know, though. I may be figuring that out immediately, though. Like, it, it's just relatively easy to get tempoed out by Wasteland if I let this resolve. I think my hand is quite good, even if I lose the life from the loam still. I, I think I'm just gonna try to drag this game on and assume that my Urza Saga can do great things. Uh, that's fine. Maybe the Ponder is supposed to happen first to look for Force of Will to back up the reanimate. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's assuming that my opponent still has the full set of Force of Wills against me. Which is like maybe not a safe assumption. My Thalias are uncastable right now. I don't think that's a big deal. Um, but Wasteland here is scary. Sure, sure, sure. And I don't think I am blowing up lands right now since I did lose my life from the loam. Um, but I'm very happy to see no threats on the other side of the board. Rop rotation is not something that I think I currently care about. It's meaningful in a little bit. But, like, I don't really want to cast a crop rotation. Like, my opponent has to have something in hand, and that something... <sighs> Maybe I have to play Yavamaya. I really don't want to get Yavamaya wastelanded, but like maybe I have to just do it to better play around Entomb into reanimate immediately on my opponent's next turn. I don't know. If I play Yavamaya, does my opponent wasteland Yavamaya or Urza Saga? Probably still Urza Saga. Yeah, then I think I just messed up. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Did they just target themselves? They did. Huh. All right. We will eventually, hopefully, outscale this endurance. Or crop rotation. Eh. So, am I just getting a Mox Diamond and discarding Maze of Ith? Or am I getting Shadow Spear so that I can attack through endurance? Or am I getting Soul Guide Lantern? If I get Soul Guide Lantern, I think I have to exile my own Urza Saga, which is like, eh. I think I'm just gonna Mox Diamond. Discard Maze of Ith. Play Yavamaya, and this allows me to put a Thalia into play, making some things slightly more awkward for my opponent. I don't really care if this Thalia gets dazed, I just have another. And if Thalia resolves my Wastelands on these next turn, get a lot better. Oh wow, we're getting a Force of Will even. Junking a Whale of the Forgotten. Alright, no need to attack with the Constructs for now. I'm getting Hercules. I'm getting Petty Thefted. That's fine. The Maze of Ith would be good against that Brazen Borrower. Um, Mox Diamond, pretty bad currently. Let's see if this one resolves. So the next question is, now that my opponent has more power, do I still Wasteland them? I think I don't Wasteland them yet, because my crop rotations are very good. I think I'm going to hold back my body. I don't think I care about the two points of damage. Like, I think if I win this game, I'm going to win it by a lot. Yes. The next thing is, like, do I go for a double block? I think I'm fine with my opponent expending resources here. If I take this endurance off the board, and then I resolve a crop rotation, the Brazen Borrower is just handled. Well, maybe I'm wrong to do this since my opponent did care about Lothalia. All right, I think that's a land. No, I think I lied, because double mu um, What if my opponent, like, randomly null rods me? So, like, it's white, white around wasteland, or it's white, white around, like, null rod and hercules and stuff. Let's just get this Yori into hand. I don't think I'm crop rotating. Like, it just feels like opponent probably has counter magic. And I'm not close enough to dead yet that I have to start going for a Maze of Ith. 
I guess not wastelanding my opponent means that like hardcast grief can potentially take Yorian. I guess like that's a thing that I could have played around. Nice. That's very good. So what's the land that I leave up? Caracas, I guess, is kind of the obvious one. Or no, I can't leave up that one. So then I guess I am leaving up a wasteland. So this probably eats Force of Will plus blue card. No. Cool. There could be something like a dismember that just kills this. Oh, that's an entomb. I have Emergency Bojuka Bog. It's dazable though, and Daze is a card that my opponent could likely have. Maybe I go for upkeep crop rotation. I don't know. This forces another spell out of their hand. And I don't let them just like sit on an animate dead or a reanimate or whatever. We're in a crop rotation, just sacrificing a wasteland. This game's not about mana denial anymore. Force of negation, sure. Uh, so this is kind of rough. So I lose Yorian. I lose Mox Diamond. I go to five. I would love to draw swords to plowshares. Ugh. Between trigger and attack, I take six damage. Maze doesn't get me out of this. I don't have the other half of Depth's combo. It wouldn't matter anyway. I lose that one. I had other lines I could have taken across the course of this game. Maybe that one was winnable. So now when I'm on the play, the sphere effects are better. I'm not even sure that the sphere effects are good. I guess if I like Sphere and Thalia and Choke, it is really hard for my opponent. Maybe I'm overvaluing crop rotation for Bojuka Bog specifically, and when I'm on the play... Like, I was so scared of casting this card just all game. Maybe when I'm on the play, I just do this. I don't have reps here to know. Uh, no. We're not doing anything objectively powerful with that hand. This one is totally fine. I'll keep this and send the Shadow Spear back into the deck. I think I'm leading on these three cards. All right. My opponent kept on six. Exploration is insanely good for me and is a great counter target for my opponent. I'm hoping that my opponent fetches because I would love, love, love to wasteland them. Your grief does nothing. Nice. No follow-up reanimate either. My opponent now knows about the wasteland. That's kind of whatever. Cool. So now I can do this. My opponent is very unlikely to counter it. I'll drop Lush Portico. Um, I am going to say that that is an above average draw here. It's not an absolute banger or anything, but... Like, the scariest thing that can happen in this turn cycle is probably, like, end of turn troll cycle into animate dead it and just having something on top of my library that answers that so that I don't lose to that is really good. And sometimes it'll awkwardly sit in my hand and not do anything, but that's the case with anything, right? Okay, cool. I'll draw the source of plowshares. I'll make my double land drops. I guess I'll put Yori into hand. Like it's a thing to do next turn. It's a little awkward to like expo expose Yorian to grief off reanimate or animate dead, but if my opponent had those cards, it probably would have happened on their turn. So, you know, you may surveil. I will wasteland that land. Like this game is not necessarily about mana right now, but I have just so much more mana than my opponent that I think I am good with this. Um, that is a much better thing to do rather than Yorian. We'll stare at each other for a minute. Uh, that's fine. Cycle's fine. We're just getting more and more stuff out of their graveyard with this endurance, which is cool. Absolutely. They can try to take me off of white, white for Yorian. Uh, but that is not the approach that they took to taking me off of Yorian. I think it's the one you're supposed to take. I don't think the raw mana amount matters as much as the colors. Like, I don't remember, but there's something crazy, like 16 or 20 colorless lands in this deck. All right, good stuff. Um, that exploration doesn't do a lot. I'll probably just play it, because I don't really have anything else meaningful to do with my mana, and if I hit Life from the Loam, like, three land plays remaining pretty hot. Brainstorm's fine. 
I'd kind of like to hit the Ghost Quarter style stuff at this point as well. All right, no follow up play. My cards off the top haven't been the best. I don't think that currently matters that much, though. No hard cast grief. We're going to eliminate that as something that's in my opponent's hand. Gross. That's a very good draw. I wish it was non dazable. I might not even play it immediately to consider playing around days. I don't know. The extra turn off the clock matters a lot. This is disgusting. So presumably there's now a reanimation card, and I just endurance in response. Last card needs to be a daze. Wow, last card is not a daze. I guess my opponent had brainstorm to get rid of cards of that nature. Yeah, so now I have six damage here. So this is a two-turn clock, not counting anything else that I could possibly do. So my opponent's at two. Toxic Deluge doesn't randomly kill my stuff. Sure. Yep. I don't even know what opponent could be looking for at this point. Like, I have three large bodies, and when I say three large bodies, I mean I can sacrifice Horizon Canopy to uh, present lethal. Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, we have gotten the, uh, the GGs from the opponent. Uh, that was a, that was a great game, but boy, it was a slog. I don't, I don't know about this one, folks. Like, this is, like, super fair. I don't have fetch lands to grow these reclaimers easily. I think I can just do better than this. I'm gonna think about it for a second, though. So I, could, I, I turn one reclaimer, I turn two play stage, tap stage for colorless, play map, Savannah, crop rotation for a fetch land fetch that's not enough lands in graveyard. Um, this is like an average looking hand that like I die to a wasteland on this and I, I think this is just slow. I think we can put together a better plan by mulliganing on average and this would do it. So now we're just looking to dodge like force of negation on life from the loam. Sure. We have enough wastelands in our deck that we will probably find something reasonable to do here. I mox diamond for sure. It doesn't super matter what I get here. We'll grab a forest. We're gonna life from the loam these lands back, and we're just looking to life from the loam into wasteland or ghost quarter next turn. I think I have seven hits out of seventy-two, which is like okay. Oh, that's unexpected. Oh, so it's eight cast with expedition map. Ward is really annoying for Maze of Ith, which is normally how I deal with these smaller creatures. Still think we're Loman. Oh, Seiju? I mean, it's slow, but good. It might just get pithing needled here. Could go for like a Samwise block in combat thing. I don't think that's the direction that I'm going. Nice. Uh, so we're going to surveil that into the graveyard to pick it up immediately. And this will be seven in hand. Oh, Metallic Rebuke. Strong. So does my opponent's build have like Chrome Mox then if they are playing this? Seems likely. So one thing that I dislike about this Yorian build is that I am just less likely to draw Exploration, which I think is just very clearly one of the better cards in my deck. Okay, oh. Sure. Ah, uh, that's awkward for me. I will dredge. I didn't get pithing needled. Wasteland, Ghost Quarter, Boseju. Pick all those up. Well, that's a real good force of will, tempo-wise. I think I'll just Maze of Ith here and stop this hit for five. I think I can deal with one Life from the Loam being countered. The second one being countered is really rough. My opponent went into the tank for a very long time about something. I'll maze this. Take a little bit of damage. Now it's my turn. I've got another Construct coming. I'm going to Loam. So, Saga, Wasteland, Oseju. One... And two. All right, cool. It works. I probably get rid of this so it does not produce another construct. 
and then start bosaging things from there. So let's take this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So next turn, if I play Samwise, my Boseju costs one. So that's a thing. This is still just so much damage, though. I think I'm going to come up just on the wrong side of this. Yep, yep. Another Saga. Maybe I should have picked up Ghost Quarter rather than Urza Saga. I'm going to take a draw, try to hit a Swords. Ooh. That's real good. Play this. Seriously? <laughs> That's very frustrating. Now I only get one land drop. I play Samwise, one mana, Boseju, a construct, maze, a construct, block a patchwork, take zero, and go from there. Sure. Two mana, Samwise. Nothing to return. Maze, a construct. Block here. Boseju here. My opponent does get an island. I take some damage. My opponent gets a redraw. Second metallic rebuke was so brutal. Loam. Loam gets Boseju, Wasteland, Ghost Quarter. One, two. Play Wasteland, Wasteland Urza Saga. Yeah, you make your token. I think I'm just dead if my opponent plays smart, right? Or I'm dead anyway. This is four. One of these gets through no matter what. So that just goes there. I Boseju one, I Maze one, I die to the third. I am just short. Unfortunate. Haywire Might in. Force of Vigor in. Tabernacles, probably okay. I can consider that cards like Emery can be here as well. And then like this stuff becomes a tier two of playables. I think the sphere effects are just like consistently the worst thing in my deck. At least with the matchup spread that I've come across. Like they help versus counter spells a bit, but the game is going to be about like answering Urza Sagas and Patchwork Automatons, and this stuff doesn't really help that. I don't really like my crop rotations either. Versus metallic rebukes and friends. Oh, crop rotations out. Thalia's out. This stuff in, these in, one sphere out, one Bojuka bog in. I don't think my opponent has enough islands where choke is super meaningful. I don't know that I want to do this. I am, I am really feeling not having exploration in hands like a lot. I don't think I pitched the life from the loam hand. But like Sphere on the draw without Ancient Tomb or Mox Diamond to power it out is like not where I want to be. I randomly got three player reward packs. Cool. Sure. This means that like a patchwork didn't come down on turn one, uh, which is, I guess, cool. I, I think I'm just like fully against Yorion since it decreases the percentage of the time that I find Mox Diamond and Exploration in my opener. Those cards are just very clearly the best parts of the deck. Let's surveil. Let's send that into Graveyard. I don't think I'm dredging. I think I want a hit for Exploration here. Not Exploration. Sure. I am going to still play a Sphere, despite the fact that my opponent is just going to like tutor up an Urza Saga in all likelihood. All right, it's in play. Uh-huh. Yeah, we all, we all knew that was coming. I will be dredging looking for a Ghost Quarter or Wasteland, but if I find it, I can't really do it immediately. Well, I found portions of my combo, so I think that's a fine alternative. Let's get some lands back. Cool. Notably, playing my Sphere of Resistance set me back a turn in executing my combo. I don't even know that we're going for the combo immediately. Sure. Made my opponent's Ancient Tomb better. Okay. Sure. That's fine. If I play out half my combo, the other half probably just gets pithing needled, so I'm gonna do this. Would have drawn Force of Vigor. Ugh. Alright. Just represents Expedition Map or Pithing Needle. Missing on Wasteland. 
and Ghost Quarter on that many looks, and both Seiju, I guess, is rough. I think I'm just taking a regular draw next turn. I think that's my plan. I just give my opponent more things to think about needling to make life a little harder. All right, my maze gets shut off. It still produces mana, which is the good news. Bad news is that I haven't found both Seiju, I haven't found Wasteland, haven't found Ghost Quarter, and now my opponent is just probably going wide of what I'm doing. I think I'm okay if I maybe hit an exploration, but my opponent is doing a very good job of just not caring about my sphere. So dismember too. Yikes, okay. I'm just dead next turn? Not always, I could draw Force of Vigor. Oh, another thought cast. Sure. The affinity for artifacts here, uh, kind of allowing my opponent to ignore the sphere of resistance aspects. Um, yeah, no, the, none of this stuff does it. I am very dead. That felt like a tough matchup based on the way that those games played out. But it feels like I had decent tools. All right, so how do we feel about our little lands and taxes deck? Pretty bad, honestly. Mox Diamond Exploration. Uh, let's take these sideboard cards out of the way here. Mox Diamond Exploration and to a lesser extent Life from the Loam are just not super replaceable cards. So when you don't have the Mox Diamond or the Exploration, I don't feel like you're coming out fast enough. And a lot of times your opponent has something in play. Our two Ancient Tombs never lined up for a turn one Sphere of Resistance, which in our 80-card deck I think makes sense. I kind of felt like it was hard to work towards a specific plan, like the extra cards in the deck meant that any time that I was trying to loam towards a specific thing, it was just hard to set up. The Dark Depth side of the deck... I don't think ever happened. Like, I don't think I ac even activated a Thespian stage once in this entire league. So that was largely just downside. Samwise was reasonable to good. Did some really neat things with Samwise Caracas loops. But this deck was just really all about Wasteland and Urza's Saga with a couple of other things kind of holding it together and making it work. I don't think that what's here is super viable. It was a cute idea to try out, but it turns out that like the Wasteland and Ghost Quarter stuff was much more viable than the Spheres and Thalias with what, with what we faced here today. So I'm okay calling this one a, a failed experiment and leaving it at that. Like I had a decent amount of agency in my games but I feel like the, the deck building direction made my life a lot harder. And the upside of your in uh, was that you can fit more bad cards into your deck. I, I, I think that's it, you know. Uh, it did block a Braze Borrower, I think, in one round. So it's not like it did nothing. But, you know, if you get to the point where your opponent isn't attacking you for damage anymore... You know, you can probably find a way to win that's not just the Orion. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. If you find you need some magic cards, check out toamagic.com. And don't forget to use Thraben U to save 5% on your order. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!